Adewale, Akinue, Agabale. <laughs>、Okay. Monday, 8th of August 2016, it's time now for episode 70 of the Lazy Couch Podcast. We're here to give you a weekly dose of tech news, gadgets, pop culture, and all things geeky. Broadcasting all the way from the TLC studios in Sydney, Australia, my name is Jeff Kim, and Triangle Bitch. My name is Calvin Lee, and I know who I am because I remember everything. Remember, like, what stuff? Like, what stuff? I remember how the first Jason Bourne was probably the best Jason Bourne. <laughs> All right, it's from that. I haven't seen that yeah, movie yet. No, I, yeah, no. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, no? Yeah, no. Okay. Maybe we can say that about another movie, but, like, you know, let's move on.、Uh, how's your week been so far? Good. It was a movie weekend. Uh, It was, yeah. Yeah, so I caught Jason Bourne on Saturday, and、uh, you and I caught、um, Suicide Squad,、mm, which we're、mm, going to talk、mm, about a lot today. It's our feature for the week. Spoiler alert. Like, we're just going to go into it. Yeah, we'll okay. We'll talk about it. You haven't watched we might, it.、Like, um, maybe the first half will be a non spoiler because a couple of people have asked, you know, whether、oh. they should see it or not. Okay. That they have to listen to the episode before they can actually. Right. Yeah, yeah we, might maybe,、okay. right. we might do that. We、Let's、might do that. We might do that. Let's do that. Okay. All right. While we're on movies, I actually saw a classic、um, on the same day.、Mm-hmm. On the Sunday? Was it? Yeah, Sunday night.、Uh, I saw The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Yep. Do you know about this? I think I, think I remember watching it. Jog my memory. Yeah, well, is, is it 60s or 50s? I think it's 60s.、Yeah. So、it's a spaghetti western, one of the all time greats.、Uh, You know, it's a, you know, when they say it's a spaghetti western, I never really understood what that meant. But it's basically it's、uh, directed by Italians, produced by Italians, even filmed in Italy,、uh, some aspect of it.、Um, you know, Clint Eastwood in his, you know, the height of his powers.、Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing to see. It was also remastered in 4K. Wow. So everything looked, you know, clean.、Uh, it was just, just amazing. Yeah, no, cool. And what was that part of? I mean, where did you、uh, catch so it? So, I saw it at the Orpheum, which is in Cremorne in the North Shore.、Um, it's,、uh, well, I don't know if it was part of any festival, but they occasionally show, you know, classics.、Mm-hmm. So this is like number eight on the all time list on IMDb. Really? Yeah. Wow, interesting. So, you know, you got Shawshank Redemption. Have you, have you gone through the list? You know, you got、no. uh, Godfather Part One, Godfather Part Two. I think number four is, what is it?、Uh, It would be fun if we actually watch all 10 movies、yeah. and do an episode. I think that was the last one out of, out of the top 10 at the moment. So,、mm. yeah. You know what? That could be a thing for episode 100. We'll see. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, okay. Ooh, we, have, we have one, two,、right. ten months to do it. <laughs> do you want to quickly talk about Jason Bourne? Yeah, so I watched it on Saturday.、Um, was it good?、Mm, I, I think it's watchable.、Um, if you're a Jason Bourne fan, it, it's definitely up there. I mean, there were some scenes, like,、um, I mean, you see this in the trailer as well.、Um, there's a scene where they're chasing,、um, you know, Jason Bourne is being chased through a riot. Um, in Rome and、uh, in Greece, sorry. And it looked amazing. Like,、uh, I think there w a s a lot of good scenes like that. I mean, they've, they've, you know, they've got the formula down pat.、Mm. Um, don't expect anything out of the, out of, you know, don't, don't expect anything amazing about the plot.、Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They, they're still trying to put him back in the agency for some reason.、Um, the only thing I, I, sh- I should tell you about the plot is it's, it sort of had a, you know, a big 21st century、uh, spin on it. So、right. it's very Snowden esque. You know, someone stealing information, putting on the web, et cetera. A lot more Facebook Live. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think if, if you had a pick this weekend to watch Jason Bourne or Suicide Squad, I'm going to say Jason Bourne. What?、Okay. Yeah, but.、Um, what else happened on the weekend?、Uh, got some speakers to put in the room.、Um, I ended up getting some Logitech X5 33 speakers.、Mm-hmm. So basic 2.1,、uh, 2.1 meaning it's two small satellite speakers and a subwoofer.、Mm. So if you're、uh, looking, looking for set of speakers, I, I recommend it. It's, it's small,、um, it does its job, and it's below 100 bucks. All right. What's the wattage?、Uh, 120. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty loud. Like it's typical Logitech stuff. You lose a bit of、um, sort of mid sort of clarity.、Mm. Uh, but what you gain,、uh, you gain in bass and、uh, general loudness to annoy my neighbors. Right, okay. So I,、uh, this week I moved from Spotify. Yeah. I cut away from Spotify finally、um, just because I wanted to try Google Play Music.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So you get it free with、uh, YouTube Red. Yeah. That's YouTube Red, not Red, Red Tube. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was listening to a podcast and、yeah. um, well, one of the guys actually knows someone that works at 
Red, Red Tube. Tube. Really? And they said they, they've been getting a lot more, you know, like traffic, traffic to it because they think it's YouTube Red. <laughs> <laughs> no, worry, they're going to get a surprise. Yeah. But anyway, I think it's, it's, it's a no brainer because like YouTube Red is an amazing product as well. Mm. Like I don't see any ads at all. It's like there's no waiting time. No. There's no, there's no frustration with YouTube yeah. anymore. And the, the user interface for Google Play Music is mm. great. Um, easy to search for, easy to yeah. start radios. You're, you're not losing anything, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife is still with Pandora. I need to talk her out of it. Maybe get a family pack mm. uh, for YouTube Red, which I, which I think is 17 bucks uh, for a family pack where oh, you can okay. get six accounts on it, which All is right. a bargain if yeah, you have yeah. a family. Um, yeah, because um, you, can't, you can't be logged into the same account at the same time for Google Play Music. Anyway, mm. Um, let's 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 get to it. Um, mm. So this week we're going to break down the Suicide Squad. But before we do that, let's quickly have a look in terms of what Apple has bought this week. How you could avoid the census, not that we recommend it. And if you think made in China is bad, try being bought by China. News. So it's 2016. What can 200 million get you? Well, Apple found out. Uh, they bought a company called Turi, as in T-U-R-I. Um, it's a Seattle-based machine learning and AI startup. Who isn't buying a machine learning slash AI startup these days? Uh, so what does it say about Apple? Um, you know, this acquisition, you know, just reflects a large push by Apple to buy more machine learning slash AI stuff. Um, also, it's um, their way of increasing their presence in Seattle which they uh, are starting to build a sizable engineering outpost. Okay. Um, so this is coming from a bunch of companies they've bought, um, but they're, they're really looking into things like data science and AI and machine learning. And Turi is considered a, a leader in that space. They, they recently hosted the uh, Data Science Summit in San Francisco. That must have been a real party to go to. <laughs> a bunch of data scientists hanging out. Um, This is their second Seattle-related acquisition in the last two years. In 2014, they bought Union Bay Networks, which is a stealthy cloud networking startup. It's always always the ones I've never heard of that scare me because they saw the tech, Apple, and went, oh, no, you can't go public with this stuff. We're going to buy you first. Um, So that started off them opening an engineering office in Seattle. Um, Have you been to Seattle? I have, yeah. What's, what's, it, what's it like? Does it, does it come across as a sort of a Silicon Valley type place? Well, I think inside Seattle, probably not. I think you have to go a little bit outside uh, where Microsoft is. Uh, uh, over in the yes, yes. Little town outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, th- there is a bit of a tech saying, I think. I'm not sure which area exactly. There's You sort of like divide it up into you know, the north side over the mm-hmm. river and south. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's pr- pretty pretty cool cool place close yep. to Portland, which I really like. Nice as well. Yeah, you talk a lot about Portland. Mm. Um, what's cool about Turi and what, what did they build? I mean, why would Apple spend two hundred mil on them? So they let developers build apps that automatically scale in tune as you need more and more of it. So it, great, it's an organic living AI machine learning thing mm. that allows other machine learning things to happen on its platform. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, and um, I think it's probably a good time to give you a reminder in terms of what Apple has bought since early 2015. They've made 15 acquisitions, including Perceptio Vocal IQ, which is more similar, sort of similar to Turi. Um, other acquisitions include Emotient, which is a facial recognition startup, Learn Sprout, an education startup, Flyby Media, who specializes in spatial perception, and the last one, LegbaCore, which is a security firmware startup. So, yeah, they're strengthening in every you know every area of you know of operating systems and learning mm. and self learning. What's it going to lead to? You reckon, especially the machine learning stuff. Siri. Yeah, it's like they're dressing Siri up with all these startups, right? They're going to make her smarter. They're going to make her safer. It's got spatial recognition. It's got facial recognition. Um, Spatial recognition is interesting. It sounds like an AR, VR, MR type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, don't don't count Apple out of the game yet. I'm gonna go out on a bit of a limb here. I think the CEO of Cherry, his name is Carlos Guestrin. I'm gonna say he's from Brazil. He's wearing a <laughs> Brazilian soccer shirt. Yeah. Okay. All right. On to the next story. Okay. So coming back to Australia. So yeah. guess what tomorrow night is. It's the biggest night in five years, man. <laughs> oh, four years, I think. Four. But it's census night, census 2016. Yeah. So you, you probably, if you're hearing this on the day uh, of 
the podcast going out, then you'll probably hear it in time. But if not, you know, it's sort of like thinking of the past. But anyway, I might. I thought I might just talk about the because I didn't realize until just recently that um, for the first time this is not anonymous. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna have to, um, you know, give personally personally identifiable information like your name and uh, your, I guess, you know, ha- having your name and your address linked together is like, you know, that that gives a lot. So that's yeah. Well, number one, I didn't realize we didn't do it in, in the past because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's like every four years, you don't really think about it. Yeah. Um, but for the first time this is happening, uh, there's a bit of, bit, of, bit of a backlash in that, um, yeah, we're doing this. Um, a lot of friends that I've talked to about, they, they refuse to do it or they've sent like very, you know, stern letters to the ABS. Um, yeah, so Lifehacker has an article about how you can actually get around it. And, mm-hmm. and because this is uh, Australia and... Um, this is a mandatory thing, and if you don't do it, apparently you get a hundred eighty dollar fine. Is that a day? You were saying? I think I remember reading somewhere. It's one hundred eighty bucks a day a for day. every day you yeah. don't do it. So wait, what? If, so if you don't do it by Tuesday, then Wednesday you get fined one hundred eighty, and then one hundred eighty, and then one hundred eighty. I don't know about that. I think I think it's a straight out one hundred eighty. Oh, okay. But like Lifehack actually did a bit of digging, and uh, apparently in twenty eleven, when the last one was. 12,000, uh, sorry, 1,282 notices were sent out mm. to those that didn't participate. Which is nothing. Um, but only 78 were prosecuted. What? Yeah, so only 78 fines were handed out, basically. So you think it's more of a scare tactic? Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. So, I mean, like, the best way to get around it is actually not have an address <laughs> at the time of the census. <laughs> Run! <laughs> so, I, know, I mean, we actually know of someone who's potentially, like, um, in between... Houses houses uh yeah like uh, in transition mode i guess um so that's one method i mean you've got other things like um apparently if if you don't uh send anything in you might get a call from the i think they call it the collector and you can sort of make up excuses to not um you know take the call or you know have the meeting at another time and you know that that sort of stuff so you know if you're interested in this um i, I guess the abs uh the bureau of St- statistics and the census it is is quite useful i mean it, mm. it, you know talking about data scientists um or data science like this this goes a long way to you know help helping with the economy uh just general health of australia yeah it's quite funny so i just wanted to double check the the census fines and mm. this article is the second thing that's coming on google which is hilarious mm-hmm. um the first one is nick xenophon who is an independent senator is refusing to put his name on census so you get fined a thousand eight hundred dollars if you submit misleading information and it's $180 a day if you don't fill out the census oh, form. Oh, it is a day. It's crazy. What? So, yeah, the news outlets are going crazy, in like news.com.au and things like that. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's nuts. Yeah, um, so supposedly the government, um, they're going to they're gonna keep it for four years, or the ABS is. Um, the government hasn't really, uh, you know, they haven't really given an adequate reason as to why it's collecting this data and why, you know, it's, we have to have our names attributed to, to the data. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a balls up, I think. Uh, yep. I'm sure there is a reason, you know, but um, apart from the fact that they want to track our every movement, but um, yeah, like they're not very open about this at all. Guess what the penalty is if you don't vote? Uh, Fifty. 20 bucks. 20 bucks, okay. <laughs> yeah. so it just, it just, a day? <laughs> no, just once off. It's okay. a $20 penalty. Right. Um, yeah, but it just shows you the, the importance they're putting onto this. So it scares me a little bit that the fine is nine times higher than actually voting for your democracy. Um, so yeah, if, you haven't, if you're listening to this and it's a Tuesday and you haven't done it, go do it fast. Yes. Now, the next story we have is on, on another um, sort of a big company out there, Disney. Um, who has now launched its own messaging app, and it's called Disney Mix. Um, it's course squarely targeted at kids and families, um, and you know the things that the, the the sort of the press release they put out there. You know they're saying that they have a decade of experience when it comes to building online communities, and I've never heard of any of these. Um, Club Penguin, mm-hmm. Marvel Kids, and a lot of other virtual worlds. So to all our listeners out there that are parents, I'm sure you come across this all the time. So what they did was to build Disney Mix, they just sort of used Club Penguin as a starting point rather than just building from scratch. So based on you know Club Penguin, they added new tools, moderation capabilities, and educational resources. Um, yeah, and um, the, 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 the appeal is apparently quite good. It, you, you, it goes all the way up to preteens. Um, but what the biggest difference is, and I, I think this is a big win, is... 
it's not just a messaging client. It allows you to play games with the person you're chatting with, mm. which I think is a huge missed opportunity by WhatsApp and Kakao and Viber and Line besides stickers and so all. Is it like in real time? Is it all? Yeah. Okay. From, from all the demos that you're, yeah, we're looking at it right now. I know like the Asian messaging apps, they all have you know games built in, like oh, Kakao sweet. and Line, especially. I'm sure WeChat as well. Yeah. So uh, it's got games like my favorite, Elsa's Winter Waltz, um, The Card of Doom, um so yeah it's a uh, card doom uh, cards of doom wow yeah i wonder if that's like hearthstone maybe for kids for kids instead of killing mm. them you throw a potion at them or something um disney mix is a free download on ios and android right i think I, i'm a, I'd be a little bit concerned uh, if you're a parent like uh is this a way for disney to collect data on your kids as well hey start young, be, there's probably start like young. location stuff that they're sharing yeah okay freaky <laughs> yes all right um yeah, while we're on sort of security, um, one password, which is a password generator tool mm-hmm. kind of thing that I've been using for the last uh, couple of years. Yep. Um, this week they announced that they're going to have individual subscription for three dollars US a month. Yikes! Which is, uh, I think it's it's great because I recently paid um, what was it sixty four ninety nine US um, as a lifetime license so uh, for the Mac sixty four divided by. Th- Three, that's yeah. 20 months yeah i would go for the lifetime well process. i guess yeah having that 65 is, is, is yeah. quite a big barrier for like software especially in the you know the app yeah world like you know when, when was the last time you paid 65 dollars for like for software right mm-hmm. so like doing this uh, i guess it opens it up for casual more casual sort of mm-hmm. people but i guess um, i just wanted to talk about you know the subscription model for things is you know quite quite prevalent these days like netflix and you know i'm doing hello fresh uh, with these things, HelloFresh isn't quite software, but you get my gist. It's kind of soft. It, it's content. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's content. It's you, tofu. You get some new stuff. It's tofu. Um, but for like software, as in like programs and apps, yeah. does it make sense to you? I, I think the one the one thing that stands out is Adobe Creative Cloud. Mm. So for those of you who work in the marketing industry or in digital, um, you everyone knows of Photoshop. So I think ooh, two, three, even four or five years ago, mm. Adobe just stopped selling uh, yeah. Photoshop off the shelf. They're like, you, you now pay, in, um, and I think it's a Annual? $15, $20 um, monthly subscription. Okay. Um, but you get a lot out of it. You also get Creative Cloud, which is mm. sort of like um, Google Drive where you can store your cloud stuff. Mm. And they've added on to it over time. So just like DLC, which is downloadable content for games where you continually pay for stuff, mm. if they continue to add on to it and then there's value in it, I'm sure. But I'm not quite sure what you can do with one password besides create passwords, store passwords. You know. I think the, the key thing is the cloud, though, because um, yeah. you know, even though this is a license for the Mac, I can still you know, use the Android app on my mm. phone. It's all, it all syncs together because yeah. it uses the Mac to uh, – the Mac becomes the – the router sort yeah. of thing to, to sync between the oh, services or the, or the cool. devices. So like, yeah, I mean, you know, recently I changed um, my Google and uh, what is the other one? Facebook was it? Or yeah. Apple, sorry, Apple okay. passwords. So a very complex one using one password. Yeah. And I don't even have to know what the password is. I just use one password to okay. just copy and paste basically. So before you went down the one password route, did you try LastPass? Uh, I might have trialed it. I think I definitely preferred one okay. password. I think I like the UI better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm using LastPass, um, the, the free version, um, and it's not great. It's a bit clunky. Mm. Um, so I definitely might have to give this a go to see if it's worth. Yeah. Three dollars. So a this month. is another subscription thing. So you know, if you if you're like me and you know use like Loot Crate and things <laughs> like that before, it all amounts up to you know, like I think I haven't actually gone through the exercise of like working out how much I actually spend on subscription stuff well, or services. The good or bad news is some of it goes through iTunes, right? Uh, yeah. I no. try not to buy through iTunes. Yeah. I think you you should do it through the app. Y- yeah, that's yeah. right. Because I think there's some subscriptions like Google ones where you actually pay more on iOS because yeah. um, Apple takes. Thirty mm-hmm. percent. So yeah, if, if you're if you're doing any subscription service, do it on the website, do it on the web. Don't do it through the iTunes store, and you might yeah. be able to save yourself some money. Now, um, this is a story I came across on the Washington Post um, about China um, and the Silicon Valley, and you know you hear about stories all the time about how China just you know spent a whole lot of money on Uber China, mm-hmm. like you know the company called Didi. Um, so there's a good story here on a startup called Quixie, 
Um, in 2013, um, they were the sort of the, you know, the envy of many in Silicon Valley, you know, where they announced that Alibaba was going to put in $110 million into them. Mm. Um, Quixi specializes in uh, running search in app. So if you've got like Amazon or eBay type app, they will create a search engine within the app to search for large inventories. So a huge, um, you know, win for any company that gets them. But then along the way, um, something went very wrong. Alibaba just stopped paying them. Um, according to people familiar with the matter, uh, the startup, you know, Quixi was confused. They were left in the lurch, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Alibaba came back and said, we'll give you a loan instead if you promise not to sue us. So they broke the agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of giving them $110 million to do whatever they want with it, they said, you can borrow $30 mil. Right. So they basically, you know, um, backed out the deal but says hey if you don't sue us we'll give you 30 mil so these poor guys um actually said yes because they needed the money right because they already had you know done so much mm -hmm. so that was really weird um so the washington post looked at why their investment from china to silicon valley so excluding real estate it topped six billion in the first half of 2016 Mm. Um, I'm looking at the chart right now. Yeah. Like, you know, it's a bit of a, it's like a exponential curve line. the last three, four years. You know, it's like jumping off a cliff. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of this comes from the fact that you know China is growing really, really quick, and there's a huge push from the government to develop more innovative technologies, mm -hmm. particularly. Uh, and this is a government thing. They're looking into VR and AI because it believes that you know China still lags behind you know the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so back to Quixi. So, okay, fine. They sorted it out um, and it got, got its first round of financing from Alibaba. Quixi started doing some work for Alibaba. Um, you know, it would, uh, they, they, the first thing they built was um, a search um, uh, of, of Chinese apps in uh, Alibaba's operating system called Yun. Um, and then all of a sudden, the revenue from Alibaba never came. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> Again, so you know um, the counter argument was um, Quixie wasn't diversifying its revenue streams enough. So you know, and and it's not like Alibaba lacks the money. They spent seven hundred eighty million dollars in Magic Leap. They spent five hundred million dollars in Jet dot com. They spent millions and millions of dollars unspecified in Snapchat. They spent millions and millions of dollars in Lyft, which is sort of like an Uber. Mm. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, if you look at the other big company in China, Baidu, which we cover in our China episode, they spent $1.2 billion in Uber. Um, so that's know. the uh, the Didi Kai That's right, that, that Didi Bai, yeah. Yeah, um, then it, Baidu Einstein. It yeah. helped them build their campus in Silicon Valley. Hmm. Um, and then there's obviously other things like Tencent, which owns WeChat. You know, they're they're a bit quieter, but they still spent you know a fair bit amount of money, and they diversified in hundreds of companies mm -hmm. in gaming, mobile money, and artificial intelligence. The interesting thing in this chart uh, in the Wall Street Journal, or oh, sorry, Washington Post article, mm -hmm. um, is that Alibaba invested a billion dollars in Lyft, and it's kind of like hidden behind Magic Leap, there, so you can't quite notice it. Mm -hmm. But it's like Baidu with Uber versus Alibaba with Lyft. Yeah. That's interesting. So they're just, you know, competing with each other. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, another company called Fusion, spelled F-Y-U-S-I-O-N, uh, whose, whose 3D photographic technology is on millions of Huawei um, smartphones. Um, it's saying, you know, he, I mean, his deal went down fairly quickly as well. It's faster than any U.S. company he's ever dealt with. They're very aggressive and there's no time to waste. Uh, I think you just have to be mindful as well that in China there will be political, there will be cultural, and there will be language barriers. So it really depends on what you want, I think. Um, well, thankfully, uh, what they're saying here is Quixi and Alibaba are patching up the, the, their disagreements. Um, the startups continue to build the technology, and they have a fresh set of potential customers. Mm -hmm. But Quixi is no longer building anything else for Alibaba. So no surprise there. Mm. They did what they had to do, and they walked away. So I thought that was a pretty cool story. Um, yeah, and, and that's it from, uh, you know, Quixi, Alibaba in China. Just just watch your back you know, when you're working in China. It's just a totally different place. You don't expect things to work like they do in the United States or any of the Western world. Let's get social, Kelvin. Favorite song. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? All those... Uh, 
Chinese companies, some, some of them were social. <laughs> um, but Instagram is probably the biggest social news this week yeah. with the introduction of stories. Yay. Also we're known as... Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so this is probably a long time coming. Um, I think, yeah, def- you, you definitely had the Instagram fans versus the Snapchat fans. This, this kind of clouds that at the moment, so... Mm. Um, I guess the features are very similar. Like it's it's a core Snapchat feature. Yeah, was never the core feature, but now is on Snapchat. But I think uh, Instagram wanted to get into that. You could do more creative things. Um, the one thing I haven't really tried it out to be honest, but in terms of creating things, but I, I've noticed that a lot a lot of people are trying it on Instagram right now. Have you tried it yet? I haven't tried it, but mm. it's my my Instagram feed is full of these now. Yeah. Um, so and it's a little bit different because you got the normal feed, and it's kind of separated out by having these circles at the at the top yeah. of the screen. Um, the annoying thing is like uh, like Snapchat, it's all the order is kind of like kind of funky because it's basically whoever did the last story gets yeah. the first thing, and because in Instagram you don't always follow your friends, like you follow just, brands. And, yeah, and so and it's like. It's it's hard to sort of go through the stuff that you actually want. I'm sure they're going to change that in the future, but um, I think it's a great move for them. Um, this sort of makes me want to like leave Snapchat, although I haven't snapped for a while. Yeah, I, I think Snapchat is totally for a different demo, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so so we, you know, digitally grew up on Instagram. We get the concept. I think Snapchat is for a totally different. Um, generation um, I, I think they they implemented it really really well um, it's easy to use a lot easier than Snapchat if you ask mm-hmm. me and um, the UI makes sense I mean Instagram it's more for adults I think because like you know you always hear feedback for anyone that's uh, I don't know older than 25 is like what like how, to, how the hell do you use Snapchat they've mm-hmm. got these old weird gesti- gestures yeah. uh, swiping left and the right to do certain filters and things like that so yeah it's it's more friendly to adults um, that's probably the biggest sort of difference yeah. and what do you think about them you know inverted commas stealing the idea do you see it as a feature of Snapchat or is it just a new content format I think uh, you know th- these uh, fads are going to sort of come and go. I think like mm. this, this is a current fad. This is a good way to actually you know share what you're doing with with, with your friends. I think um, yeah. So I don't know. Can you do a story like as a private message as well? That would oh, really uh, copy Snapchat. Yeah, I'm but, sure. Um, I'm sure they'll go there. But yeah. I, I think. I think what that hasn't been hasn't been mentioned is. And, and we, I know this for a fact is before Instagram pushes these things out, they have a chat to their advertisers. Mm. Hey, do you do you see any potential in this? So I'm guessing this is go, soon going to be able to be monetized. You know what I mean? Prioritizing yeah, course, stories yeah. and things like that. So it's a money maker. Yeah. The the other sort of core differences between Instagram and Snapchat is that you know with Instagram, like when you're going to share something, or when you do share something, you want that picture to be perfect, right? You don't yeah. really because it's uh, it lasts forever basically yeah. un- until until you delete it. Snaps are more like very quick. You don't really care about the quality as much. Mm, it's so I think this sort of blurs that line right now. So interesting how yeah. the usage uh, changes. Yeah, and I think they're very different. So um, yeah, let's see. All right, staying on Snapchat. Uh, and we covered this a little bit uh, earlier. NFL is coming to Snapchat as well, as well as Twitter. How? So, <laughs> well, I think all it is is that, um, you know, like in Snapchat, when you swipe to the right you got the Discover sort of yep. brands. You know, you got CNN, you got Fox Sports, um, but NFL are going to directly have a Discover channel. Mm. So um, I guess like yeah, when the season starts again in uh, sort of September ish, um, you're going to get highlights, pa- highlight packages. Sweet. Um, yeah, so it's just like um, you know, catering to the younger audience. Um, but yeah, the NFL are being quite innovative right now. Yeah, no, I think you have to. I mean, mm. there's so much happening with all the other different social networks, etc. So then yeah, it's a good move for both of them. All right. So you're listening to the Lazy Couch Podcast. My name is Jeff Kim. And I'm Calvin Lee. This is your weekly fix for tech news, gadgets, movies, and pop culture. If this is the first time you're listening to us, we hope you're enjoying what you're hearing so far. Be sure to subscribe to us. In the meantime, let's move to the feature of the day, Suicide Squad. Where is she? This is not just her. <laughs> Everybody's disappeared. You know the rules, hotness. You gotta keep off these bars. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Does that kind of sum up the movie? No, no. <laughs> well, let's, let's not go there so early. Okay, okay. So, um, so, so what are we doing? We're going to okay. do a mm-hmm. um, no spoiler. 
Yeah, the first part will be no yeah. spoilers. So we'll just talk about the characters somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we'll ruin it for you. <laughs> and whether you should watch it or not. Yes. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so where, where should we start? Should we start with the director? Yeah. Okay. So a bit of, this is a bit of a setup anyway. s p e n t too much time. But uh, mm. David Ayer, well, I heard him pronounce David Ayer. Mm. But I think it's David Ayer. Um, he's, he's the director. He's, uh, he's, he's also written the movie as well. But um, did you know that he wrote the original Fast and Furious? No. Yeah, and he also wrote Training Day. What? Which is an amazing movie, Yeah, right? Denzel Washington. Um, mm. in, in terms of uh, director roles or director... things uh he directed fury which is at the tank movie yes, with brad which Pitt, is also which great i haven't seen but i heard great things no, really good uh end of watch which is a really gritty cop bad cop drama thing which i haven't seen but i think is that the one with ethan hawk no that's training day yeah that's training day ethan yeah. hawk and similar Denzel. i think similar vein right yeah so very gritty so like i think when when he was announced as director of suicide squad like mm. you know you're automatically or instantly thought of a certain sort of style yeah Whether this movie delivered it, we're not, we're not too sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll go through the characters and we'll go through the plot <laughs> a little bit and then we'll cover off, you know, what exactly the Suicide Squad is, also yes. known as Task Force X. Um, the next one in line is Viola Davis, who plays, who, who I think is the real bad guy in this movie, Amanda Walker, mm. who is the, uh, I think all of you have seen the trailer, you know, she's the lady that has a chat with the, um, the brass, you know, about getting something signed off. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Joel Kinnaman plays Rick Flagg, and uh, Joel's been in a few things, uh, notably the new Robocop. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't like that. <laughs> no. I actually didn't mind it. I really? I haven't watched it. it. Um, and like, I really like his, uh, his voice. Rick Flagg. Yeah, like, he's got a, a, yeah. a husky, deep uh, yeah. voice. But this is uh, very much a deep, deep cut, you know, um, from the, the comics. Uh, the, the first, first Suicide Squad was all humans, mm. no matter humans. And, uh, you know, he led the team back in the 60s in the comic books and he's still survived, you know, 50 years later. Yeah. No, so um, going through the, uh, the bad guys. Yeah. Uh, Will Smith, Deadshot. Yeah, this could have worked for them and this could have not worked for them because um, you don't really see Will Smith in a movie where he's not the lead guy. It's been mm. a while. Um, so I, I think he did an admirable job. I think he pulled off Deadshot really well. Um, If there was a lead to this movie, though, I think he would be it. Yeah, right? it would be a close yeah. call between him and Margot yeah. Robbie. Um, yes. So, so no, he, would, he definitely had a lot of screen time. And we'll talk about some of the scenes. Like, I, lo- I love some of the costumes that he wore in the, in the yeah. flashback scenes. Yeah. Floyd Lawton. Uh, Margot Robbie, of course. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinzel. We'll yeah, talk about her later. Yep. Jared Leto was the Joker. Mm-hmm. There was not enough of him. Um, Jai Courtney was uh, Captain Boomerang, who someone has to convince me why he's a thing. Because um, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Big rings, man. Uh, Cara Delevingne, yep. Enchantress, or June Moon. She's a bit of a, uh, a two-faced double yeah. character. Yeah. Did she do a good job? Uh, for, I think for the... Uh, it's, it's really not her fault. Um, but we're not going to spoil it for anyone. So I guess that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I must stop myself from okay. talking about the plot. Um, but, right. you know, for a model slash actress, I think she did a great job. <laughs> okay, just like uh, oh, other other models and actresses, <laughs> um, Jay Hernandez, El Diablo. I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, one more. Yeah. He's up there for me. So I would yeah. say he's my top three. Um, top for three. This. Wow. Yeah. Top three out of about 50 characters. That's yeah, pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, he's he's a tattooed guy. If you've seen the trailers, uh, okay. I'm not gonna. No, no. You please do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. a d e w a l e a k i n u w e aga. I'm sorry. Adawali. Yeah, you, you give it a go. Adawali Ukunu Uye Abaj. I want to like, play the, the bongos as you do yeah. this. This is slightly so, racist, so it, maybe. If you're laughing okay. while listening to this podcast, okay, it's A D E W A L E A K I N N U O Y E A G B A J E, also known as Killer Croc. Oh, okay, maybe we should have just gone with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, well, we'll talk about him later too. Karen Fukuhara played Katana, and uh, 
I quite liked her role. She was, you know, very no. Uh, no, okay. I, 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 the, she it's was the one typical. I had the most hope for, only oh, because right. she was an up and coming um, actress. I follow her on Instagram. Oh, she, do you now? Yeah. What else is she in? Uh, I, I think this is her first thing. Is she also a model slash actress? No, Should I. I, I, with it? I think she. I think she did really well. Okay. I just wish there was more to it, uh, but we'll talk about how jumpy the movie is in a sec. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Slipknot, it's funny. So the next guy. We'll, we'll talk about why that's funny. Yeah. But, uh, Adam Beach um, played Slipknot, and yeah. he's another another meta human. Is he a meta human? I'm not sure actually. Um, okay. Well, when we on. say he played Slipknot, he well, he actually played Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> he played him very well. Yeah, he played, get it? Slipknot and he ties knots. He climbs really well. Um, I don't know. He doesn't slip. Maybe that's why he climbs. Really. So that's how he was introduced in the movie, by the way. Just in case you think we're crazy. Slipknot, he okay. climbs stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, this is another hot, tough one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got it, man. Ike Barinholtz. Yay! Okay, that's good, I think you did well. Okay. You did he well. Griggs. Yeah. Um, I didn't quite get this character, but this is the guy who was also in um, ooh, Neighbors, Bad Neighbors. Uh, oh, the first uh, one. Uh, he was the friend, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he was a bit of a weird guy, and I, I, I want to talk about him because I, I have a question to ask you later. Okay. And guess what? Uh, ooh, is this spoiler-ish if we talk about the next? No, I, I okay, no. I don't think we should mention the second one uh, in oh, the okay. show notes, but All I think right. the first one everyone knows. Because he's in the trailer. He's in the trailer. Um, and he's Batman. He's Batman. Yes, he's in it. Um, so he, I, think he, I think every scene he, he was in was good. Yeah. Uh, gave him a different depth, so mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. Um, so before we go into the plot and breaking it down with a couple of scenes, would you would you tell would you recommend someone go watch it? Um, yeah, I would actually. Yeah, I would actually because I, yeah. you know, despite all the bad reviews, I'm sure yeah. you've heard about him. Uh, I think it's you know for for what it's worth, I think it does a good job. Um, just just pretend not to like. There's a lot of hate for this yeah. at the moment, yeah. and I don't know if it's because of the BVS. Uh, I don't know expectations. Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, it's just DC just has a bad rap at the moment. Warner Brothers, yeah. so you know, like it could have been better, definitely. But I think you know, just going with it, just try to be entertained. Just don't be so critical of all the little things because yeah. it's going to happen. It's a movie, you know. It's a movie. I would say it's worth twenty bucks. Yeah, uh, no, I agree. Um, I think the first act of the movie was great. I think act two was was good, and act three just fell off the cliff. I would agree with you yeah. there. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, stay stay till the end of the first credits. There's a good little scene there. Uh, we're not going to ruin it for you. Mm-hmm. We will for anyone else who's sticking <laughs> um, um, yeah. sticking after this. Um, but yeah, I, I think you know it was so much fun for the first. I would mm. say an hour, an hour and ten minutes. And then it just, I don't know what happened, but we'll talk yeah. about this in a sec. So stay on the show after you watch the movie. No, I think it's worth agree. it to see the interaction between the Jaika and yeah. uh, Harley Quinn, of course. Yeah. Uh, I forgot her name. Just for so I say if you are a New 52 fan of The Suicide Squad, definitely go watch it. What if you haven't you know, read the comics and you don't know much about it? Uh, I think it's still enjoyable. I, I think it's still enjoyable. It's probably but more enjoyable than someone that's <laughs> you know, really read it ruined the a lot of dreams. Yeah. No, I think all the characters had a lot of good um, depth and, 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 you know, it was fun. Mm. Uh, it was fun just watching, you know, a bunch of superheroes not give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Quite literally. Um, so, no, um, you know, what, what, what are you going to give it? How many potatoes are Ooh. you going to give it? Uh, yeah. Uh, three potatoes out of five. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it a two and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, have fun. Go watch it. Don't do what I did with a bunch of expectations. Um, <laughs> you know, it's got a great soundtrack. I think it's, you know, it's, it's, mm. it, it keeps you, you know, entertained. Um, so, yeah. So, in three, two, one, we're going to ruin everything now. Spoiler. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Okay, spoiler. we need a clip for that one. Yeah, we need to find put it. That, put that in the show notes. Okay, all right. So, where do we start, Kelvin? Um... Let's act one. Act one. Act one. Okay. Act one. So, I Lots think. What to they, like about it? Um, I, I think what David Iyer really did well, and it's got a bit of a Snyderish feel to it. He focuses on the very iconic things, where I think Marvel goes the other way around. Mm. The, you know, they don't focus too much on Thor's hammer. They don't focus too much on the cape, how he got it, etc. But just little callbacks. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think they needed to do that to establish Suicide Squad 2 or, you know, the, the, the growing sort of DC universe. 
so so I think that that act one was good, you know. Introduced, um, uh, there were a lot of Batman scenes in the first act, you know. Um, there was a bit of the Joker. There was mm. Harley Quinn. Uh, a, a, a strong focus on Deadshot, you know, in the first act, mm-hmm. which I really enjoyed. Um, you know, he could go hand to hand, mano a mano, with uh, Batman a little um, until his kids stopped him. Mm. So yeah, I, I thought it was thought it was good. That was the best part of the movie in terms of introducing all the characters. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, they, they had a lot of flashbacks, right? Yeah, how you know Batman or the other meta human. It could be part of the Justice League. Yes. Caught Boomerang Man or Captain Boomerang. <laughs> I keep on calling him Boomerang Man. He's uh, Captain Boomerang. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was the Flash. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think Ezra Miller is going to kill it. I think I think it'll be great uh, mm-hmm. as the Flash. I mean, even then, you know, what was his line like? You know, oh no, no honor amongst thieves or something. Oh, like is that, that what he said? Yeah, something like that. Um, um, it was hard to listen past the Speed Force yeah. um, <laughs> that, that was buzzing around. Um, Amanda Waller. As well, I, I would say she's she, solid. She's very solid. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she portrayed the comic book character the best. Mm-hmm. I've got an issue with Act Two where she shoots the FBI agents for no good reason, mm. just to show how mean she so in is. In the building, right? Yeah, in the building where she gets up yeah. and she goes. Why was she there in the first place? I, mean, I, I don't I get totally it. I, I, like, I don't get it. That seemed like a bit of a twist or some sort of plot thing device to kind of shock the audience for no reason at all. Yeah. It got me because I thought there was going to be a cameo by someone. Mm. Um, so, so maybe a, I don't know, uh, someone related to Superman or something like that. Um, yeah. But it turned out to be her. Like, yeah. I really liked, uh, you know, the dialogue. Like, you know, they, you know, I think uh, Rick Flagg um, called the, the voice of God. Yeah. And she be- appeared on an iPad. <laughs> yeah. You know, little things like that I really like. But yeah. then, yeah, just the execution overall, just kind of liked uh, the pacing was weird. The first act yeah. was all like... Uh, Almost like Guardians of the Galaxy style, introducing yeah. the characters, yeah. flashbacks, um, all those like I don't know, like almost like football card sort of bio stuff yeah. coming up on the screen. It w- I'm it not was a fan of that necessarily. No, and, it, and it, it, that's a good that's a good thought. I mean, you, I mean, the the real comparison between Marvel and DC has to happen between the Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad. Mm. I mean, this is you know not committed to memory or anything, but. With the, no one knew anything about Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, sure, they were a comic book, they appeared, but even majority, like card and Marvel fans didn't know. Yeah. yeah. So even when they announced it, everyone was like, "What?" Yeah. So I wish I wish they had done the same thing that that Guardians of the Galaxy did in the sense that you don't have to introduce every character to that depth. Just let them meld, let them have mm. fun, and yeah. all, all the time they spent flashing those technicolored cards at us, they could have spent just showing us the interactions between the characters. Um, mm. Yeah, um, and I just want to quickly cover off the funniest thing in Act One: blowing the head off Slipknot. <laughs> like, why? Why did you do yeah. that? Yeah. Well, speaking of you know, Snart is uh, penchant, penchant yeah. for. You know, all the callbacks from the comics. That's yeah. an actual scene from the comics. Yeah, except um, they blew his arm. I was... <laughs> yeah, not his head. Okay. They blew his arm off. Um, so it was more like, ooh. Right. At least you go like, oh, God. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. they mean it. They just popped his head so off. Like, but this is a pattern now. So, yeah. like, you know, if it's like a team-up kind of movie and you don't see a lot of one character who's been announced but, like, you know, don't know much about and then you don't see any, any of him in the... Charlie's is going to be killed off in the first minute. Yeah, um, he was I, literally introduced. Like he didn't have a backstory or anything. No. He just, he just hey, join the team, guys. Yeah, just and come then, on. We need someone to climb stuff well. Yeah. Um, Enchantress. I think it's time to talk about the mm. uh, protagonist to the antagonist. Um, I think I called it when I said something not right about Enchantress. Uh, she could be the bad guy. So uh, I'm going to pat myself on the back. Uh, yeah. Oh God. Uh, I, I think Kara did... The problem with the Enchantress is mostly just CGI. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? She's floating around in, 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 in air. I, I really like that visual, though. Yeah, no. Yeah. The, the part where she turns yeah. into Ooh, that was, Enchantress. That was scary. Was yeah, like, yeah. That, that was creepy. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know anything about Enchantress, and I, I really should have read up a little bit more. But the fact that she just says Enchantress and just, and just becomes it is a bit, you know, lazy. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if, that, if that's what happens in the comic books. Yeah, um, and uh, the heart thing was a little bit weak t- for me. Yeah, carries in a briefcase. Yeah, and, and then she carries it around. And the, her brother yeah. is kept in a little urn in her bedroom on a shelf. Mm. Like, no, that should also go in a case. 
that is a demigod in there. Yeah. Who's angry? You stole yeah. his sister's heart. <laughs> um, so I thought I I didn't get that either. The fact that she could just go in. Yeah. And the fact that the box can detect a chantress somehow it goes red. You know when she tried to approach the box. All right. Why didn't, didn't it do that. the same for the room or put that everywhere, man? I'm like, I just don't understand that. So there's a couple of weird choices in the story that felt rushed. Mm. You know what I mean? They had to introduce the brother. Oh, wait, she can go in, steal it, do it, get the brother out. Uh, like, yeah, the one person I didn't uh, talk about, well, we didn't talk about earlier, is Common. Yeah. <laughs> he was what? in there. Because everyone thought he was going to be Tattoo Man. Yeah. And you know that uh, the, the train scene, or yeah. the train station subway scene. Yeah. Like everyone thought that would be the tattoo sort of being, you know, animated. Yeah. And uh, it was it was the brother. No one talked about the brother. Yeah. No one mm. saw that coming. Mm. Um, yeah. And he died really quick too. I, I think he survived like half a second longer than Slipknot. <laughs> he was in a flashback. He didn't even survive yeah. the actual thing. Yeah. And that's the other thing. I, I think I think if you look on the internet now, Jared Leto is saying that there were a lot of Joker scenes that were taken out. I just don't get it. Why not? Like Jared did a good job, and and the mm. scenes between Jared Leto and Margot Robbie, uh, play, you know, Mr. J and Harley Quinn, were really good. Mm. Uh, you could really see that bond. Um, slightly rushed, you know what I mean? Like uh, Harley Quinn was in Arkham Asylum for mm. like months before you know it got to that level. Yeah. Um, I think I definitely would have preferred if um, we saw like a separate Deadshot movie or separate. Harley Quinn movie mm. or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe not a whole, whole movie. Yeah, I I personally think they should have taken the X Men route and just mm. not focus on every single member of the X Men and just yeah. take a core group of them and really focus in on them. This this could have been a great movie if yeah, they sort of touched on that and then sort of build up to it rather than just like vomit. Yeah. And I <laughs> yeah. don't understand why Joker is not the bad guy. I mean, the story itself, if you look at the killing joke and everything, it, it's it's enough. You know what I mean? You don't need the Enchantress. Yeah. You don't need the demonic brother. Joker enough would be a big challenge for the Suicide Squad, considering that Batman can't even do much about him. Mm. Maybe because they wanted to show off El Diablo's, you know, um, god-like uh, yeah. shift, um, which is in Act 3. I mean, for me, Act 3 is when it all falls apart. I mean, the whole blue light swirling rubbish thing. It got a bit Fantastic Four, didn't it? Yeah, it got a bit Fantastic Four. It got a bit like, you know, mm. Thor 2, which yeah. made no sense. So it went down the safe route of, you know, machine kills human, pull something out. Get... Look, at, at the, f- the last fight scene between Enchantress and everything else, she could have killed them all. So I, I don't get it. So, okay, so what I didn't get while I was watching it was that Enchantress was actually possessed by someone, some other entity, like the sister and the brother. Because Enchantress was the, the black one, yeah. where she went all yeah. dark. And then when she was clean, yeah, clean so Enchantress. <laughs> <laughs> um, they didn't explain it really well, but in the comic book, it's mm. Enchantress who gets possessed by another demonic force yeah. who has a brother, right? That's like right, Succubus yeah. and Incubus That's or right, something. That's right, yeah. Um, but they didn't explain that at all. I think all the, all they said was, "Look, yeah. the enchantress with the heart is just cleaner." Did you see, like, at the end of the battle, like enchantress was like, "You know, kill me now," sort of thing, yeah. and she was like really weak. Yeah. So her by herself is, isn't very strong. No. So yeah. I'm guessing they might. The reason why they let June live, which I have huge issues with, um, is that. So that when Suicide Two Squad, when Suicide Squad Two comes along, you can have a Chantress in the squad. Mm. Um, oh, okay. So possibly, yeah. I think it needed closure for Rick Flag as well. So yeah, would it? Yeah, I mean, like, and I, I'm not sure. I'm so convinced about the whole Rick Flag and June um, love story. It's all a bit like it's all a bit much. It, like I don't believe like a patriot like Rick Flag would mm. fall for the good old I'll sleep with the asset. <laughs> well, Amanda Waller wanted wanted that to happen, so she made it happen, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. She kind of planned it out. I think it was a more of a plot device, really. Yeah. So let's talk about the couple of scenes that Batman was in. Um, they showed obviously the Batmobile. 
um, a little bit of it when he was chasing the the purple, uh, Lamborghini. The purple Lamborghini, which is a great song. By <laughs> everyone, go check out the soundtrack. Yeah, um, they showed um, obviously the, there was a little sort of chase scene, and uh, he jumped the car, and then the car you know sort of ran itself into the river, um, and then he put Ooh. on the uh, little oxygen thing, yeah. which is uh, a great sort of uh, homage to the animated series, which he does all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought it was uh, like in you know Star Wars Jar Jar Binks, <laughs> not Jar Jar Binks. Qui-Gon uh, Jinn yeah Qui-Gon Jinn sort right. of thing um, so that scene where um, Harley Quinn was underwater she trained to hold her breath for five minutes mm. um, so th- I picked that up from the interview with uh, Jimmy Fallon uh, I was trying to work out what, what happened to the Joker because he was in the car he just disappeared left he left Harley Quinn to die Harley Quinn there yeah, yeah. okay uh, yeah, so there are things like that that don't really make a lot of sense yeah um, like him going down the helicopter and he survived he's not that uh, unkillable um, uh, I, I thought that scene where um, they found out that the helicopter was taken and you know the, the, it was they were getting hit by the Gatling gun was really cool as well I, I felt I could feel the weight of the bullets mm-hmm. and I felt they were being held back and Harley Quinn being crazy just stood up and started walking um, mm. so uh, you know her, her I think Harley Quinn is also they, they did a really good job with her weapons the baseball bat the mallet mm. the gun um, and the, uh, the the gesture costume Got yeah. a little yeah, two seconds worth. Two seconds of it, uh, you know, based on that very popular comic book front cover between mm. um, Joker dressed up in a tuxedo and yeah. Harley Quinn in the jester. So we saw a massive uh, Kevin Smith rant right, just earlier. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was like, I think uh, the initial, because I, I don't know too much about Harley Quinn, but, you know, yeah. this is a guy, Kevin Smith, who named his daughter Harley Quinn Smith. Yeah. Was it Harleen Quinzel Smith? I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, you know, like he he sort of admitted, yeah, like if if the whole movie was like that with with her with that just gesture costume, they would have just looked too weird. No, it would have yeah. it would have just been too out of place. So I think going mm. with the candy floss type t shirt, yeah, and, and that's like really shorts. iconic now. Like uh, how yeah. many Harley Quinns do we see uh, at Supernova? The Flenny and yeah, uh, the Saturday night where I went to watch uh, Jason Bourne, there were a couple of them walking around as well, yeah. being the first Saturday since the opening, right? Um. So yeah, um, should we talk about the final? So if you watch the movie, um, it feels like there's going to be Suicide Squad 2. You waited for the first bunch of credits to fly by. Mm-hmm. And then this is one scene. With, Bruce uh, Wayne? Yeah, Bruce Wayne. Yes. Not Batman. Uh, and Amanda Waller. Yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, you know, uh, just just you know, shut it down and uh, give me what you have. And, uh, you know, he, the, it would have uh, worked better if the Justice League trailer didn't come out before yeah. that. But, uh, yeah, there wasn't, you know, like we already know he's going around recruiting. So Yeah, which I thought was a really weak scene. I think the mm. only thing you got out of that, which the comic book and the animated series already told you, is that Amanda Waller knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Yeah. Um, so, you you know, I, I think, you know, and they show Ezra Miller again in the folder. I think... I think they're going to bank everything on The Flash. Uh, I, I predict that after you know mm. Justice League, I think they're going to push The Flash forward because um, he's such a likable character and such a likable actor. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think I think he's going to be their sort of you know yeah. Iron Man. Right. Yes, Iron Man and maybe uh, Spidey, Spidey as yeah. well. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I had a question about Griggs, his character yeah. Griggs. So yeah. I didn't really get it. He's a prison guard. That kind of like you know talks to Harley Quinn occasionally, calls calls it the hotness, hey hotness. Um, so he's somehow like he's a dirty, dirty prison guard, I yeah. guess. Um, and he's got some dealings with the Joker's people. Mm-hmm. So like, okay, so he finds a chance to give her the phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To know to tell her that um, Joker's coming. Joker's coming for her. And then like, what was his role after that? Like, I don't, I don't get. I think What's he, he getting out of it, or? Uh, well, for one, it, it seems know, like the whole scene just went missing. Yeah, it, it sounds like something was cut off because remember that scene where he was he was gambling. Yeah. And they probably threatened him with you know if you don't give it that money, we'll kill you and your family, which you see a lot in in the show. Just so I think this is also a setup to the Killing Joke, the animated series that just came out on Blu-ray, which is amazing. You have to go watch it. Um, Joker does this thing where he puts your family and he makes you make choices. So very similar to the Heath Ledger. Uh, Joker where he probably threatened him and his family they showed a little bit of it from that scientist guy who made the um, oh, the, okay. the rice grenades that go into your neck yeah. um, so maybe maybe that was it but you're right it was weak the fact that he could sneak Harley Quinn a phone mm. um, uh, is, is ridiculous uh, 
yeah weak character no good no good reason why he should be there he just plays the, the whole you know um spy thing where he you know he's sitting within that um in the argus unit uh for, for and i think he was probably involved with the last one of the last bits where the joker breaks harley quinn out yeah after the whole thing right yeah so he would have been involved he would have been involved as yeah. well so okay. so, right. so at, at the very end uh, that's a good point they they break harley quinn out again yeah so that's i think the movie finishes at that yeah with that yeah yeah um i was looking around and i didn't realize this in 2014 dc had an animated movie called um i think the arkham asylum let me just have a quick look mm-hmm. um assault in arkham and it features the suicide squad and it features batman and it features a joker and there's also talk about the solo movie being about batman mm-hmm. in arkham asylum yeah. trying, to, trying to get in there like, r-rated plays yeah like the game as well I think that would be an amazing setup. Um, so I, I, I wish they would have done that instead. Mm. Do a Batman and um, Suicide Squad trying to save people yeah. in Arkham Asylum or something like that. Right. Yeah. I think, I mean, the, the movie tried to do a couple of things, right? It tried to introduce the sort of the new sort of direction they're going with, although I don't think they did a very good job. Uh, also to introduce the characters, Harley Quinn in particular, and the new Joker, because apparently he's going to be in basically every DC property <laughs> going forward. And, uh, you know, poor, poor old Gerald Leto has to, you know, do that do that method act- acting thing. Um, I mean, like, a lot of the scenes were cut out from the final cut, but, you know, apparently, well, I mean, I would say 10 minutes all up mm-hmm. of his stuff. Yeah. I don't know. If that... Mm. I just hope it isn't a trend where, you know, they're, they're going to do, like, what they did with BVS where there is a director edition um, but you picked up a story on Hollywood Reporter about you know um, the weird pacing and the multiple editors. Um, yeah, you think that's reason enough for why the movie seems uh, so choppy? Yeah, so that I mean, I, I said it straight after the movie. I think there's a lot of uh, mm. Warner Warner Brothers uh, meddling, uh, especially in that third act. Yeah, um, I think uh, like I feel like if if uh, the whole movie was similar to that first act. Kind of like uh, I don't know, had a had a bit more pizzazz or something. It had, mm. had a bit more energy because um, I think there was so many flat spots in that. You know, after that first bit, yeah, when they actually go out on the mission, um, and yeah, the the whole fact that it was Amanda Waller that they were trying to rescue was such a letdown. Yeah, like um, I mean, it was a surprise, yes, but like, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, there were a couple of random things as well, like. Uh, you know, at the at the bar where they all sat down, had a drink, had a conversation. I didn't mind that. Mm. So, but Boomerang left and he came back for no good reason because he yeah. felt like he was friends with them now. And don't forget, at this stage, Margot Robbie's um, grip, well, bomb in her neck has been deactivated. So there's no good reason for her to be hang around right. either. Yes. So I don't get that. Well, she said she had nothing else better to do. Yeah, but yeah. but they're bad. I don't think I don't think they were bad enough. <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. the only the only person there who had a reason not to kill is Diablo. Mm. Killer Croc just wants to eat people. I really think, I, to be honest, I don't think he ate enough people. Actually, what happened at the end there? Because he was attacking the the squad underwater. Yeah. So did he try to get away? Or? Yeah, he, he came out and there was that all fight with... Uh, oh, I know, but then he came back in the end, but then before the bomb went off. I think he swam when let that guy commit it. So it was a kamikaze, the bomb. Remember there was one yeah. guy who just stuck the bomb? I yeah. don't know why he couldn't put a longer timer and just start <laughs> swimming away with the car. Yeah. Uh, there was just very little pointless suicides <laughs> oh one. i get it yay, that's yay. the name of the movie get it task force x um mm-hmm. cool so so right. i think that's i think that's probably enough <laughs> <laughs> uh what, what about yeah the sequel do you feel like um you know all the pieces are there um the setup for the joker harley quinn kind of story maybe backstory <laughs> yeah uh, it, I'd love to see more Harley Quinn. It depends on what they do with the solo Batman movie, I feel. Because which one do you go with now? Like, first. Mm. Like, what are you going to set up? So, I, I'm guessing, let's just say that the Batman movie is next. So, Batman goes after Harley Quinn and Joker? Uh, what, you mean in the DC Universe? Yeah, what's happening next? No, the after? next is Wonder Woman. Uh huh. I think you've got Aquaman. And Justice League. And then Justice League. And then I think you have The Flash. So, I think. So I don't know where Batman Arkham kind of fits in. Where, yeah. where do you fit another Suicide Squad? I, I, I yeah, a bit, so, bit messed so, up, I think. So 
Maybe. Yeah. I don't think the Justice League will go after. I mean, like um, other like Jeff Johns, who's who's a new DC guy. He's the you know Kevin Feige equivalent mm. now. So you need you need need that guy to sort of map it all out. You yeah. know, like a ten year plan. Like I remember yeah. first hearing about the ten year plan for Marvel. And was like this is a bit ambitious, but yeah. they're actually following through. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. Um, so they need that the phases. They don't have the phases. Happens. No, they don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's all just a confused mess right mm. now for DC. Um, I, I I hope Wonder Woman does well, but now I think my 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 expectations have just hit a yeah. whole new low. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like I I think it was low going into the movie because of all the reviews. Yeah. So actually, it actually actually exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Um, but. You know, I, w- I wouldn't say it's a great movie. It's not. It's not a terrible movie either. Um, I think it just had some weird decisions, and I think it's yeah. just due to the marketing and all the pressures of yeah. the studio. Um, I think my my biggest criticism is all the bloody trailers that they sent out. Yeah, no, I totally agree. With I don't. You. I don't think there was one line of dialogue that um, Margot Robbie had that, was that wasn't <laughs> that we hadn't seen. There, there was no. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, like that that one line in the helicopter where she met Katana. She's like, "What are you wearing? And is that the scent of death?" It's actually quite funny. Yeah. Only if you've heard it the first time. I oh, know, yeah. Um, yeah, so so that's it, I think, uh, for The Suicide Squad. Uh, we're hoping for a lot better. Uh, I think it would have been a great movie if uh, Civil War mm-hmm. was shit. But unfortunately, <laughs> Civil War was good. Yeah. Especially when you think about the ending of that. They could have done something quite similar. Not the whole blue light, swirling trash BS. Um, so they could have done a Civil War and just focused on the characters and someone, mm. you know... I, there was not enough betrayal as well, considering there were a bunch of bad guys. I think if they had focused on that, one of them being a double agent or something, mm-hmm. that would have been a lot cooler. You know what? If David Ayer watched The Good, The Bad, The Ugly <laughs> just before writing this story, I think he yeah. would have got a few tips because that's, you know, that's how you do it. That's how you, you do it. You don't make movies like hey, that anymore. Um, if you want to watch a good sort of get together of a bunch of random guys, you know, you could think yeah. of like, you know, Samurai Actually, this is 7. A, this is quite a brilliant. I mean, maybe not just three of them, but yeah. maybe six of them, maybe two of them are good, two of them are bad, yeah. two of them are ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Even worse, yeah. Yeah, maybe you know. should have done a bit of homework. Yeah. But that's it for The mm. Lazy Couch uh, for episode 70. Um, if you liked it, disagreed with us, anything at all, you know, you can find us on Twitter at The Lazy Couch or email us old school at thelazycouchpodcast at gmail.com. You can fi- find us on Facebook also known as Facebook um, and Instagram by searching for The Lazy Couch Podcast. As always, the website is thelazycouch.com. Don't forget to go, go out to the website and subscribe to our newsletter. If you're listening to us on Apple iTunes, just quickly click on those stars and uh, let us know what you think. Five of them, please. Five. Kelp out. Jeff out. My pudding's a little temperamental. But gee, what relationship doesn't have its ups and downs? A flat. I never knew that our romance had ended Until you poisoned my food And I thought it was a lark When you kicked me in the park But now I think it was rude I never knew that you and I were finished Until that bottle hit my head Though I tried to be aloof When you pushed me off the roof I feel our romance is dead Wouldn't have been so bad if you had told me That someone had taken my place But no, no you didn't even scold me You just tried to disfigure my face You'll never know how this heart of mine is breaking It looks so hopeless, but then Life used to be so placid Won't you please put down that acid And say that we're sweethearts